Hello everyone and welcome to C-Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This is the first video in the series. And this video is going to be focusing on downloading, installing, and getting a little bit familiar with Visual Studio. I'm going to try my very best to keep all of the videos in this tutorial short and concise. Try not to give too much information or theory until it's absolutely necessary. So hopefully it won't be too much at any given time, but if it is, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'm happy to answer your questions. With that, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is install Visual Studio 2022. The link is in the description. It will take you here. Hover over the purple button and click Community 2022. It will automatically download the installer. And then once you run the installer, you'll see something that looks a lot like this, except for maybe in light mode. So what we're looking at here are called workloads. Now each one of these workloads, if you select it, it's going to choose a bunch of these individual components to be installed alongside Visual Studio. Things like the ability to develop ASP.NET for websites or Python development. For the purposes of this tutorial and all of the videos in it, the only one you need right now is .NET Desktop Development. So make sure this one is ticked before you hit install. Now, if you want to go ahead and install anything else, that's your choice, but it is very easy to come back into the Visual Studio installer later and add anything you want or remove anything you want. Once your installation is done, go to your start menu, type in Visual Studio. Now you'll see Visual Studio installer, which will take you straight back to the installer where you can add or remove your workloads or your components. And you'll also see Visual Studio 2022. So open that up. It's probably going to ask you to link a Microsoft account to have your free license. It's going to ask you what theme you want and things like that. But then it will take you here in which you want to create a new project. Now there should be a search for templates box. You want to put in console and we are going to create a regular console app. Push next. Now we have to put in a project name. I'm going to call this beginner tutorial. Tell it where you want to store it and push next. We do want .NET 6.0 long-term support. Hit create. Just a second, our project will be created and we are ready to go. Now that we have Visual Studio open, you can see that there is a line of sample code in our editor that says Hello World. You might be familiar with that. It's very common to print Hello World every time you start a new language. So to do that, let's execute it by clicking the green play button or you can push F5. And what that's gonna do is exactly what it says. We are writing a line that says Hello World to our console. So that happened right here. The next thing we want to do for the purpose of this tutorial is we want to use the old console template. And what I mean by that is that in .NET 6, which recently came out, this is the only line of code that you have to have in your editor to execute. But if you control click this link here, it will bring up the website and you can see the comparison. So before .NET 6, this is the template that you had to use to execute this line of code. And we're going to copy this, go back to our editor, select all of this, and paste where we have the old template here. The reason we're going to do that, it, it does the same thing, and the new template can be nice if you are doing certain things. But for the purposes of being able to explain what is happening and why it's happening, and also because so many other existing tutorials use this template, it's a lot better for us to use this when we're starting out. And then maybe we can use the newer one later when we understand it better. Now that we've changed our template, you see this green text here that says, Note, actual namespace depends on the project name. So we're going to go over namespaces and these comments a little bit later. But for now, what we need to do is erase this comment and then you'll see namespace my app. So it's saying that it's the project name. So our project name is beginner tutorial. So change your namespace to be beginner tutorial. If you named your project something different, then put whatever name is right here, right after namespace. 
Now, we've changed the template, we've updated our namespace, we can execute it again, and we can see that it does the same thing. The next thing I want to do to get ready for this tutorial is to disable CodeLens. Now, CodeLens is a great tool for developers, and I recommend that you use it when you know what it does. But for the purposes of learning and these tutorials, it just puts extra information on your screen that you don't need to see right now. So let's go to Tools, Options, Text Editor, All Languages, Code Lens, Untick Code Lens, and hit OK. And you'll see that it cleaned it up just a little bit, and now we don't have to look at that extra information. Okay, so we've seen our editor a little bit. We've executed what was in the editor. Now let's take a look at the Solution Explorer. These files you see here are really just a representation of what's on your computer. So if you right-click Solution, you can go to Open Folder in File Explorer, and you can see where you put your project. Here's the solution file. Here's your project folder, which you can have multiple projects per solution, but you'll get there. If you open that up, you can see your what's called a csproj, which is a project file, which represents this project here. And you can also see your program.cs file, which is here and is also what you have open in your editor. So this is actually your code. So then you have bin and obj. Now, just put the obj folder out of your mind right now. You don't really need to worry about that. But the bin folder is actually the binaries folder, which is what happened when you built in debug your .NET 6 executable. So when you hit run and it built your code, it turned it into an application. Now, if we double click to run our application, you'll see it opens and then just immediately goes away. That's because when the main method here executes this line of code and finishes, the application closes itself automatically because there's nothing else to execute. Now, Visual Studio keeps the console open for you, but if you run it outside of Visual Studio, that's what's going to happen. So what we need to do is we need to write our first line of code. If you go in here, Click after the semicolon, enter down, type in console dot read line, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to write our hello world, and then it's going to wait to read a line from the console. Now, the only way for it to read a line from the console is for the user to push enter in the console to create a line. So now what we want to do is build this, which we don't have to run it to build. We can right click our solution or our project and hit build. And you'll see at the bottom build one succeeded. Now we can go back to our folder. You'll see the time has updated and we can double click it. And now we see our output and it's going to wait for us to push enter. So if we put in any other key, it's not going to do anything. But if we push enter, it's going to finish executing. Congratulations, you have your first working application. Next up, we're going to do syntax. What is the deal with all of these curly braces and semicolons everywhere? And what do they do? Thank you for watching everybody. I do appreciate you. Hopefully this is helpful to someone. Happy coding and as always, take care.